the Atlanta choice. It's so fascinating. Yep. It's going to play out uh, potentially for the next several years, it looks like. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We don't know. But wh why did the Falcons draft Michael Penix? How did this happen, Albert? Yeah, I, I think to some degree it was – Maybe a little of an overcorrection of what's happened the last couple of years. Um, and I mean, to be fair to Arthur Smith, who's now the Steelers offensive coordinator, um, things went haywire on them two years ago and they were never able to fully put the toothpaste back in the tube. The plan had been to hang on to Matt Ryan for an extra year um, into the 21 season. Um, then, you know, they get involved in the Deshaun Watson pursuit that puts things that, that, that kind of moves things sideways. So they wind up trading Matt Ryan, um, you know, in 21, they go forward, um, with, you know, Marcus Mariota at quarterback, um, or sorry, I'm gonna get my years mixed up now. I'm uh, 22. That was 22. They go forward Mariota and then last year with Ritter. And so, you know, really it's been kind of a, I would say a difficult couple of years at the position and, you know, ownership's obviously a part of that, you know? And so, um, you know, I do think, you know, like there was at least there was, there was a mandate there for, for Terry Fontenot and for um, the new head coach Raheem Morris, get the quarterback position, right. Which is what, why and, signing cousins made complete and total yep. sense. Cause it then frees you up to use the eighth overall pick to supplement the On choice of else. cousins. Like that's, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. So I did not yeah. see this coming and, you know, and, and I still, and neither did Kirk. I'm still, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's right. Huh? They, it's true. They didn't get to him until he was on the clock. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mean, like, first of all, the, their process, I do think, um, yeah, they went through a really full process in, 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 in assessing Michael Penix and assessing the whole class. And, you know, I know that Raheem had gotten his coaches, some of whom would come from him, come, come, um, with him from the Rams, um, to sit down and drill down on the quarterbacks early so they could do it ahead of free agency. So they could look at, you know, the rookies together, um, you know, with the potential free agents, Kirk Cousins being in that group. And, um, you know, like I know they liked Michael Penix, you know, pretty early on and they kept looking at it and drilling down on it and saying, okay, how do we, um, how do we, how, how do we, you know, get to a, a full assessment of it? That leads to, you know, seeing him throw at the combine and he threw the ball really well at the combine a lot better than he did at the senior bowl. And then, um, you know, getting on a plane and going across country from, um, you know, from at, at Atlanta to Seattle and a huge group of them, I think eight of them, um, got on Arthur Blank's jet and 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 flew from Atlanta to Seattle to see Michael Penix throw. Um, Penix threw great at that workout, um, you know. And then I think the discussion becomes: All right, like if it comes down to it, do we are we actually comfortable taking him eighth overall? And um, you know, I I know a part of why they kept it quiet. And this part I understand is that. Terry Fontenot was in New Orleans in 2007, 17, um, when uh, Sean Payton was very high on, on Patrick Mahomes. And the Saints really felt like part of the reason they lost Mahomes was because word of their interest got out. Um, and word of their interest getting out was confirmed to them in, in that Brett Veach, who you know was the Chiefs, I think, vice president of player personnel at the time, he's their general manager, now texted the Saints draft room after they traded up. Um, to get to 10 in front of the Saints who were at 11 with two words, got him, you know, no way, like basically telling the Saints, like, hey, we knew you were onto this kid and we just leapfrogged you to go and get him. And we all know what's happened with Mahomes. You get marked by your experience. And part of that was why Terry Fontenot made the decision to keep it quiet and just not say anything about his interest on my, in Michael Panix to anybody or even indicate that they would use the eighth overall pick or consider using the eighth overall pick on a quarterback. Now, the flip side of this, Rich, and I know I'm going on here, but the flip side of this is part of the reason Kirk Cousins left Minnesota was because they had been very honest and open with him about taking a quarterback um, in 2024, going back a year. Um, when they were negotiating an extension in 2023, um, part of the issue for Kirk was they wouldn't guarantee anything past 2024. And they also said, you know, if the right quarterback comes along, you know, we can't rule out the idea we'll, we, that we would draft your replacement in the spring of, of 2024. Fast forward a year, and and they're talking ahead of free agency this year. And, you know, the, fa the, the, the Vikings wouldn't guarantee all of 2025, and they wouldn't rule out the possibility that they'd take his replacement there. And so, you know, I think for Kirk in this situation, it was really looking at it and saying, 
I need to go to a place that's going to, you know, put it in writing, basically writing my contract in a way that's going to affirm to me that I'm going to be their quarterback for the next few years. So I'm not part of some sort of plan to offload me, you know, which is what he felt like Minnesota was, was going to be, you know? And so he gets the contract from Atlanta, but, I don't know that he ever asked the question, are you going to take my replacement in well, the first round? Well, why would he? And, you know, I mean, yeah, so, I mean you so, wouldn't think so. So are you, you saying, think- just so you're, just so I'm getting this right, you're saying Kirk Cousins left the team that has Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison on it yeah. with a head coach who is a former quarterback who is very quarterback friendly And he's been with for a while. He left that team because that team was up front with him about we're going to choose your replacement in this draft, most likely, or it's we're we're not going to not do that. And he leaves for another team that gives him the contract he's looking for, but then goes ahead anyway and drafts his replacement uh, without telling him until they're on the clock. And that team is doing so because they had such a tough time replacing Matt Ryan and they got a veteran finally to replace Matt Ryan and chose a kid anyway because they want to make sure when they're post the guy who's the next Matt Ryan that they're not going through the experience they had between Matt Ryan and the next Matt Ryan. Is that did I get all that right? I think Albert. I think so, and that was why it took me so long because there's all like this so complicated. Because it, because it, it's, it makes no yeah. sense, right? It just makes it's very little yeah. sense because the whole idea of like, well, cousins might because you hear this spinning, you hear, and it may not be coming from Atlanta. You're you're hearing it from a lot of Falcons fans or that you do hear it from members of the media who might be hearing it from the Falcons, I don't know. Well, that Cousins might not be ready yet. Then why sign him? Oh, well, well we need to make problem. sure we need to make sure that 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 the next guy after Cousins is already here when we're drafting as high as we're mm-hmm. drafting, but the guy that you're drafting is 24 and you right. may not find out that he's the guy for real until you finally do start him when he's close to 27. Uh, you know, it if, just doesn't. If you want to take this to another level, Rich, right? Like want to take this to another level. Think about this, that like it's viewed as one of the biggest advantages in all of sports, right? To have a top quarterback <laughs> on a rookie contract. We saw what it did for Buffalo. We saw what it did for Kansas city. We saw what it did for Cincinnati. And you are basically negating the ability to do that now because if he doesn't play until year three well then you're you got kirk's contract this year you got kirk's contract next year and then the year after that you're still going to have even if you cut him like the cap ramifications you know like so that advantage that you would have having a quarterback on a rookie contract is basically canceled out by Kirk 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 cousins contract so by the time he becomes the starter, you're already like almost at the very end of that. So you better be sure that he's going to become the type of quarterback that's worth paying because by the time he becomes a starter, you're going to be confronted with that decision. No doubt. And it's a decision that clearly the bears just avoided having to do because Caleb Williams came along and it's, it it's, it's part of the conundrum. Albert Breer here on the rich Eisen show. Catch the rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.